In this video, we're going to talk about interphase and mitosis, uh, really two different uh, mechanisms that make up the cell cycle. Cells, just like organisms, have a life cycle, and that's made up of two distinct phases uh, of their life cycle, interphase and mitosis. And so in this video, we're going to take a closer look at and see some of the things that happen and occur during these two different phases of a cell's life cycle. Uh, to begin the cell life cycle, um, the majority of it is spent in interphase. So if this is a, uh, a model here to represent our cell life cycle, the majority of it we can see is spent in interphase. An interphase is divided into three different uh, groups or specific phases. The first one is G1 or GAP1. And during G1 phase, the cell is growing. It's carrying out its normal functions. It's growing. Um, it's maintaining homeostasis. In our second portion of interphase, we call S phase. And this is when the DNA app actually replicates. This is the stage where the, D, uh, the cell is preparing to, uh, to divide. And in and doing, and, and doing so, the DNA has to replicate. So that's an S phase. And our last part of interphase is G2, gap 2. And this is where the cell is preparing to divide. In this stage, some of the last organelles are copying, such as mitochondria and chloroplasts. They're being duplicated so that our two new cells uh, at the end of this process uh, will actually have the same amount of organelles as well as DNA that we'll see. Uh, the last part of this cycle, the, the last portion, is something called the mitotic phase or mitosis. And this is the last portion of the cell cycle. And during mitosis, we actually see the cell split from one into two. And what is really unique or what is really important is the original cell divides so that, or splits, so that we have two cells that are the exact same. They have the exact same DNA, and, and we have two exact cells. And so we're going to look and see how that happens more specifically. Uh, but those are the two different parts of a cell life cycle. If we were to, to say that this occurred on a 24-hour scale, just as a model, let's just say a cell lives for 24 hours, um, the majority of that time would be spent in interface. Uh, if you were to think of it in terms of a 24-hour day, mitosis, the actual portion of cell division, wouldn't occur until about 11 p.m. So really, it would be about a 1 24th of the overall cell life cycle. About 90% of the cell's life is spent in interphase. Mitosis is just a very small portion of that. So let's take a look at these, uh, these portions within mitosis and how this process works a little bit more specifically. And before we do that, though, we need to talk about chromosomes. Now, we probably know, you should probably know, that uh, within the nucleus of a cell uh, is DNA. All cells have DNA. And in order for a cell to actually copy or divide itself, that DNA also has to be replicated. And in order for the DNA to be replicated, it needs to be condensed. DNA is, is usually this long, stringy, uh, wispy stuff. And, and it's very spread out. It's very, very long. Uh, in order for the cell to actually manage that and kind of compact it into a movable feature, uh, it shrinks um, the DNA with some proteins down into something called a chromosome. And so here's a nice image of a chromosome. Uh, it, within the middle of the chromosome, we have a, something called a central mirror. And that's holding these two branches of the chromatids together. And on a chromosome, uh, there will be different segments or sections of DNA that, that code for a specific trait. We'll talk about these more when we get to genetics. But this region of DNA right here and here that we call a gene, it's a region of DNA that, that codes for a specific trait. Uh, each, one of these, each one of these kind of legs or arms of our chromosome are chromatids. We call these chromatids, and we'll use some of these uh, other phrases a little bit more in just a minute. And so really a chromosome is a long, coiled, or condensed thread of DNA. Um, it usually has numerous genes. Within our, within our bodies, our human bodies, uh, humans have 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs. This is different for every species. Um, fruit flies I have, have uh, about 7 to 8 chromosomes, I believe, um, and, and it varies per species. Uh, additionally, the number of chromosomes doesn't um, dictate the complexity of the species either. Uh, there are some fern plant species that have a couple hundred chromosomes, and so it's not just necessarily on how advanced or uh, developed the species is. So in an, uh, an interphase, we'll take a closer look at interphase here. Again, this is the largest portion of the cell cycle. And in this phase, we're really seeing uh, the cell divide and to prepare for cell division. Um, so we have a nice image here of interphase, uh, plasma membrane, the nuclear envelope, which surrounds the nucleus. 
uh, chromatin and DNA. Uh, centrioles we briefly talked about in the cell um, unit, but we'll see how these actually help to move chromosomes around. And so this is the phase of growth. Uh, cells spend the majority of their life cycle in interphase. And at the end of interphase, the DNA and organelles are replicated, and they're ready for division. Uh, and again, this is the stage of DNA replication. Prophase is the first portion of mitosis. Prophase is the first portion or the, or the first part of mitosis. Um, and in this stage, this is when the DNA actually condenses to form thick rods that we call chromosomes. The DNA is actually condensing down into the structures called chromosomes that we looked at. The nuclear envelope, right here we can see our envelope, this actually starts to disappear. Uh, it actually starts to disintegrate so that the chromosomes uh, can be removed from the nucleus and can be moved around. And then we start to see spindle fibers form from our centrioles. Uh, at the central uh, position, there are uh, centrosomes, and, and from those, uh, spindle fibers are going to be released, and they're kind of like long fingers that are going to help move these chromosomes. We'll see in just a second. In our next phase, uh, called metaphase, uh, the chromosomes begin to line up on this imaginary equator, or this imaginary line that we call a metaphase plate. Um, these chromosomes are going to split and be pulled by the centrioles and the microtubules to the opposite ends of the cell. So here's one end, or, or one pole. Uh, here would be another end or another pole. And these chromosomes are going to separate so that we have an equal amount on both sides. Uh, the spindle fibers help the chromosomes line up along the equator. Uh, the spindle fibers attach to the central mirror of the chromosome. That's this little dark spot right here. And that's what's actually going to pull them apart to separate them. In anaphase, uh, this is actually the fastest or the quickest of the uh, stages of mitosis. This is when we see the uh, chromosomes, excuse me, the sister chromatids actually separate. Um, so if I go back one, one slide here, when these are lined up on our, uh, well, on our metaphase plate, remember that they've already duplicated. So the original chromosomes that we started with have already duplicated, and because of that, uh, maybe both of these are chromosome number one, and both of these would be chromosome number two. And so we call these, because they're identical, these are sister chromatids. And so these sister chromatids during anaphase are going to separate, and now we call these daughter chromosomes. It's kind of a lot of lingo here to help explain what's going on. It uh, can be kind of very confusing, so we'll have some practice in class drawing these out and working with some models to help explain it further. Um, in anaphase, the sister chromatids separate into chromosomes. The chromosomes are moving to opposite ends of the cell. Each side of the cell contains an equal number of chromosomes as found in the original cell. And once this is all done in, in telophase, our next phase, each new cell is going to be identical to the parent cell. So telophase is the last phase in cytokinesis, and this is where we actually see uh, that our original one cell split into two. In animal cells, we see something called a cleavage furrow uh, form, and that's what's actually separating or splitting these cells into two. Um, our chromosomes begin to unwind, our nuclear envelope begins to reform, and so we see uh, two different cells forming from this. Uh, the chromosomes are coiled, they break apart, the nuclear envelope reforms, the cell membrane reappears, and the felt cell uh, finishes division and re-enters interface. So once this whole process of cell division is completed, we have two identical cells with the exact same or identical DNA, and once this process is completed, they begin uh, interphase again, and so it just completes this whole process over. Now you might be thinking, well, if all of these cells are dividing and dividing and dividing, what happens to all these extra cells? We get so many of them that there'd be too many. Well, at some point, these cells are going to die, or there's going to be some instructions that tell them to stop dividing. Um, there's going to be some chemical signal that says that. Usually, cells have a finite amount of time that they survive for, that they live for, and so that's what causes um, our cell numbers to not increase exponentially. If something were to happen to the control of, of how the cell is controlled, uh, we can actually see something form where the cells continue to divide, to divide, and that is something we call cancer. And we'll take a closer look at that a little bit later. Uh, to check your knowledge on a piece of whiteboard, on a whiteboard, or in Google Sketch, or on a piece of paper, I'd like you to draw out the following stages of the cell cycle: um, interphase, metaphase, anaphase, and where does DNA replication occur? To put this all together into a nice video, uh, I, I'll link this here. It's a, a video showing mitosis walking through all the steps where you can actually see what's happening in an animated video. That's it for the cell cycle. Uh, we'll, we'll move on from here and, and look more specifically at DNA structure and how it replicates.